a bout of manfluenza has kept me out of the workshop for a couple of weeks. And um, as we all know, man flu can be incredibly dangerous. It's, uh, it's been known to kill. So I'm back in now, and I need to make some dust. You've all, you've seen the big slab of Zebrano get cut down. Uh, I've made the top from it. And I've also got a neck blank that I need to process. So this needs flattening down because it's it's got a bit of a wobble to it at the moment. So it's this slight twist in the board. So I need to flatten this. I don't have a jointer because I've done everything by hand up to this point. There are times where it would be useful, but I don't have the space. Um, it's also too long to fit in my router planing jig. Um, so I have to find a way to flatten this. I had a similar issue with a base that I recently built. I built a custom case for it and I needed to level the entire surface of the case which meant that I had to create some sides to extend the router sled. Um, basically what I did was get a couple of boards, attach them to the sides of my workbench and use that as the sled. So that's what I'm going to do with this one flatten one surface and then I'll throw it through the planer. They, they'll they thickness it down, keep it nice and nice and level and then I can resaw it and glue it up and do all of the stuff that I need to do. So I'm going to get on with that now. <clears throat> Obviously we want a flat surface, so I've just got to double check which sides I'm going to use to run the uh, sled across. So I'm going to be using the three flute cutter from Radiant Tools. This thing's an absolute beast. When I was doing the case for the base, I didn't have a long enough router bit and I needed a bearing guided cutter. Uh, I spent a while hunting around. I like Radiant router bits. They're sharp as hell, they leave a really nice surface and they're really well made. And I really wish they'd send me some free stuff. But they didn't have any in stock, um, and this was probably about eight months ago now. They had a dig around for me, fantastic customer service. They actually had their demo model that they used for the um, photos, so it was unused, it just didn't have the protective wax on it. And they actually sent me that one. So if you look at the photos on the website, it's this cutter. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to be using. It leaves a nice smooth surface and hopefully it will reach deep enough down. So we've got the sides attached here, I'm going to put this in the router and then we're going to make some dust. So I've finished with the router sled, this surface is nice and flat which means that when I put it through the planer it's actually going to give me a nice square surface. So we're going to run it through here a few times, get it properly flat and properly square and uh, then I'll have to clear stuff off my table saw which has become a bit of a dumping ground.
So we've got two nice flat parallel surfaces. The grain goes in every direction on this on this Zebrano. So there's a little bit of tear out here and there. It's it's not perfect. It's, I'm not quite happy enough to glue it straight up once it's cut to um, cut down. But and that's what hand tools are for. Also, I've just got loads of little splinters. The next job is to clear off the table saw. So we're going to square up these two faces and then we're going to run straight down the middle which will give me a nice two piece neck plank. I know a lot of people rave about one piece necks and a lot of that I think is because that's just how it was done like a lot of things in guitar building there's very much uh, kind of this is how it's always been done therefore this is how it should be done type approach from a lot of people I'm not saying it's wrong but I'm not saying it's right there's more than one way to skin a cut I like to use laminate necks because to be honest, as far as stability goes, you can't really get much better. In a one piece neck, if the wood wants to bend, it all wants to bend in the same direction. Whereas in a laminate neck, you can arrange these pieces so the grain is in opposite directions. So if this bit wants to bend this way, this bit's going to want to bend this way. So neither of them can really bend add another piece in there and that might want to bend in a completely different direction that the other two pieces don't want to bend in. So basically your glue joint is going to be your strongest part. It's all stuck together, it can't go anywhere. Add in a truss rod and if you want carbon fibre, you've got a rock solid neck that is probably in some cases slightly over engineered. But it works for the Victorians, and all the big cast iron bridges that they built are still around. So let's take that approach. I like to do usually a minimum of three pieces to a neck. Sometimes I'll do a two piece. I have done one pieces. I've done a nine piece. That was hard work. Recently I've started tapering the kind of inside laminates. I've built a jig for that which chances are I'll end up doing it on this and we'll see that later on. But I love the look of, of a stripe running up the middle and if it's thinner at the headstock than at the body it you don't get the different pieces and laminates running out of the sides which if you're using more than say three you're getting into thinner pieces of wood and the thickness difference can mean that you, you get the, the wood running out the sides of the neck which in my opinion looks a bit strange um, if I remember I'll put a picture of the back of a base neck that I built recently where I did that with the seven piece neck and I tapered all of them so that they were about half the thickness at the headstock end to the body it was a full neck through. It was an absolute bugger to do, but it was worth it because it looked stunning. Uh, so that's what I'm planning on doing with this one. I think I'm going to nip outside and get some air first because the man flu still left me with a bit of a dry mouth and uh, my throat was getting a bit scratchy. So I'll be back soon. So this is the jig I've got for tapering the uh, neck laminates. It's really simple, it's basically 
we've got a couple of pieces of plywood, we've got some slots to cut in the top piece, coach bolts and wing nuts, and a big square, that's important, very square piece of oak. Essentially, you loosen up off these nuts and you can twist it to virtually any angle as long as it's within the parameters of the uh, the jig, obviously. Tighten it down. If you get a straight edge along this face, to make, you make sure that it's nice and flat. Because obviously you don't want to be cutting a piece of wood that you've basically bent, unless of course that's the effect you're going for but there are better tools for that and then you essentially attach the piece of wood to this face you can use clamps but they'll get in the way of the saw you can screw it on as long as you make sure you countersink the screws because you don't want your saw blade hitting those but I found the masking tape and super glue trick works perfectly well and then this just runs on the table saw, this face against your fence, your blade cuts along here, and it's this these two faces are perfectly parallel, so whatever angle this is at, it'll cut through it. So I've put some masking tape on here, I've measured it all out and I've got it where to the angle that I want. I think where we're probably halving the thickness at this end. It seems to work out quite nicely at, along the length of the neck, roughly half of the laminate kind of brings the angle in quite nicely. You can sit and measure it exactly for the taper of your neck and do all kinds of complex maths to figure out and get the same proportions of each laminate, which works, but I'm not going to essentially. So we've got here a piece of walnut that's left over from the neck I built for Svalin. I don't like to waste anything. I think the centre laminate on Svalin's neck was a tapered wedge that I'd cut off for a base for the base neck that uh, you saw earlier. Essentially if it's in the workshop it's going to get used. It's the best way. Only buy good quality wood, so as long as you're careful cutting it up, you can keep on using it until it's all gone. So I need to attach this now. I'll put it in my uh, bench vise for now just to hold it, and we'll crack out some super glue. Through the table saw, it's now nicely tapered. Just need to take it off the jig. It's still slightly rough with saw marks on it, so it won't planing, but that's to be expected. What we have a tapered neck laminate with not much effort at all. Oh, 
Cześć! Well, what I figured out from that was that from here to here, planes beautifully and took seconds. Down here, the grain decides that it's going to go in completely random directions and is an absolute arse. So I'm going to have to sample this. This sanding block is actually part of my old piano. When I took it apart to reclaim all, all the mahogany, this ended up with a really nice straight edge. So I planed it up and I've used it for years. So uh, I think I had this before I got myself a proper leveling beam. Worked really nicely. Well, the grain on this Sobrano is a little bit too wild for uh, the plane, so I'm going to have to do lots more sanding. So my veneers arrived and I've started measuring up to figure out how much I need. Uh, I like to use my square to cut off the excess at the ends because if you've got too much flapping around it's quite fragile, it can split and break which obviously we've got a slight split starting up here. Not an issue at the moment as long as it doesn't get any worse. So that's about the length we need. So you just hold it down and use a sharp knife or scalpel to cut it. Your best bet is usually to try and cut in whatever direction the grain is trying to pull the knife under the, uh, the, the straight edge because that way the blade hits the straight edge and keeps on cutting whereas if you cut the other way it can catch in the grain and you cut can run off into the veneer which isn't ideal it can, uh, can mess up your day a little bit It's very important when you're gluing up multiple pieces to do a dry test run before you put any glue anywhere. The last thing you want to do is find out there's something not quite right when you've got glue on everything. It makes it a right pain in the arse and rushing to fix it. So, I've got a nice blue veneer. And then more Sobrano. I like that. And everything fits perfectly. So it's about time to get some glue on it. So we dismantle it again. So a piece of waxed paper or greaseproof paper works just as well. It just stops your glue squeeze out from sticking your neck blank 
to the piece of wood that you're uh, going to use. Poltergeist. Right, so we're now ready to get some glue on. And this bit, you don't need to work too quickly because you've got a little bit of open time on the uh, tight bond. It doesn't go off for a little while. But you don't want to be getting distracted and going off to make a cup of tea or answer the phone halfway through. So it's a, uh, once you start, keep on going. <laughs> 